I've done up and sold a couple of these Galaxy 2000s already. Um, but I got another one at the last Dayton Hamvention um, for a song and a dance. Uh, kind of a bud gave it to me for a uh, good price, so uh, thank you for that. Um, um, two tube amplifier uses 10 sweep tubes, 10 6 HF5s, which are, you know, relatively cheap for sweep tubes compared to what all the rest of them go for. And this one uses 10 all in finals. It's a two piece amp with the um, RF deck right there and the power supply right there. I'm already done with the power supply and it works. And just about to start on the um, head here. But basically on this video, I'm just going to go right quick through the output circuit or what they call the tank circuit. And most sweep tube amplifiers use a PI circuit, PI. And what that consists of is a, uh, well, let's start with the tubes. The output of the tubes have um, DC high voltage on them. And the RF, you know, comes out the tubes and it goes into a blocking cap and it's called a blocking cap or sometimes it's called a DC blocking cap because it blocks the DC so the DC stays on the tubes and can't go past the caps but these caps um, let the RF go through um, so the blocking caps do their DC blocking and the RF only comes out and then the first thing it goes into is the tune cap which is this variable here and then it goes into the um, both the band switch and the tank coil or the output coil right here. And since it's a multi-band amp, you got the band switch and it taps at different points along the coil. And I usually say most sweep tube amps, four, six tubes around that area need four turns. But then the more tubes you have, the less turns you need. And the less tubes you have, the more turns you need. It kind of works in reverse it's, as far as the amount of tubes. And this has 10 tubes. There's two sets of five. There's another set underneath those, if you can see them under there. It's kind of tight in there. A lot of heat from this amp. But anyway, with these 10 tubes, it uses three turns. Less turns for more tubes. And, you know, it comes up here in and one, two, and then three. And you see this... Uh, tap under here that goes to the band switch so when you're on 10 meters all you're using is these three turns of the um, tank coil there and then as you go to uh, 15 20 meters um, two more coils for 15 you know and it taps right here and then it goes to this coil down here for you know the rest of your uh, bands uh, you know 20 40 and 80 and um, you need a lot more coil for the 204080, so you got this uh, more closely spaced um, coil there to give you uh, more inductance for the um, lower bands there. And also, with this band switch, it switches in extra needed capacitance too, and that's kind of why I'm making this video here. Um, so for 10 meters, you would only need these three turns of coil and all the rest are for the other band. So if you wanted to mono band it, you would um, just take the, uh, you can get rid of the band switch and go right from the um, tune cap to the tank choke. And from that um, output of that tank choke, you can go right into the uh, load cap and then out to the um, relay. And that's all you would need. You would not need the band switch and any of this other crap. But also the band switch, at least on this one, it switches in more fixed capacitors because this small load cap right here doesn't provide enough capacitance for the lower bands either on your um, 20, 40, and uh, 80 meters. So it needs more capacitance instead of going with a bigger, more expensive cap that can handle all the capacitance. What it do, does as you go um, on the uh, lower bands, it switches in some of these capacitors here and that fixed capacitor in there as needed as it goes on the band. So basically on 10 meters, 
if this was a 10 meter only cap uh, amplifier at most at most you, you need two sections of these cap here and probably one one section so you could get a smaller capacity uh, variable capacitor here that's a one section one here that much capacitance for the 10 meter well, actually, I said that wrong. I keep saying this is the uh, tune, but that's actually the load. The load you probably need, too. And you can even see there's a um, bar across it, so it's running, too. And then that one is switched in on, I think, 20 meters and above, uh, as well as these other capacitors. And here's the tune over here. And at tuned cap, the most you would need is two. Probably could get away with one um, on this amp, one, one section of it. So if you were going to build an amp or buy a capacitor and just for 10 meters, that's about all the capacitance you would need right there. But since you, you know, going up to uh, 15, 20, 40, 80 meters, you need that and then some. You still got to switch in other capacitance on it. So these ham bands with all the band switch and all the extra stuff in there, not needed. Um, a 10 11 meter only amplifier and actually any amplifier that'll work on 10 meters will work on 11 meters you don't need to you know re-tap it and do anything else with it unless it's got a special circuit in there to block 11 meters the Heathkit SB221 had such a thing on the input side it had a special circuit just to block 11 meters and some of the um, older um, plate chokes back in the day um, they would work on 10 meters but they would resonate on 11 meters and blow up the um, amp on 11 meters but then when hams went to 12 meters they found out that they couldn't use those um, plate chokes that would um, resonate on 11 meters on um, 12 meters because it would do the same thing on 12 meters but anyway I'm gonna end this video in a second here again uh, a mono banded uh, 10 11 meter amp you don't need all this extra stuff you would need about that much uh, tune capacitance maybe that much low capacitance all that would be extra and then you would not need a band switch and you would not just need to switch in all these extra capacitors and you wouldn't need a band switch so all that does going through all that stuff is a, um, a problem point and makes you lose a little bit of power by having all that connected so I get people asking why would you mono band an amp well it makes it more dependable because the band switch is always a uh, problematic problem because you got RF going through a switch and um, RF really don't like going through them that much if you turn the switch um, while you're transmitting you got to blow it the band switch and they get old they lose you know some of the connection they get carboned over get dirty and uh, they don't connect no well and they blow so you know getting rid of the band switch you make it into a better amp more direct a little bit cleaner and you would need all that extra stuff you know that whole coil could go the band switch could go and i haven't decided yet where i'm going to keep in all these big capacitors or i'm going to um change it to something that's uh, a little bit more uh, i guess economic for this amp where i don't need all that um extra stuff but anyway that's all i wanted to show on this one it's just um what you need for 10 meters only remember four coils but more tubes a uh, little bit less and less tubes you need more for the um, plate or the tank choke that's it for this one bye